Hello and welcome to the tutorial on working with the quick search widget in Matrix. I'm Marilyn Maxwell and I'll be your presenter for this tutorial. The quick search widget lives on the dashboard of Matrix. When you first open Matrix, all these little boxes that are there are referred to as widgets. Search is front and center on mine. I've moved it there to make it easier to perform the tutorial today. Yours may be somewhere else on the page. If you simply click and hold your mouse button down in the title bar, you can rearrange yours if you'd like to pull it up to the top as well. The search widget is pretty straightforward. If you have an MLS number or numbers, you can put that in the first field. If you want to search by price range, you can simply put that there. If you search by range, you want to be sure to put your two numbers with a dash in between. The thousands place is already presumed. So in this case, I would be looking from $350,000 to $450,000. If you uncheck that box, the thousands place is not presumed. So now I'm only looking at $350 to $450,000. If you're looking for rentals, you might want to uncheck the box and look in, say, $895 to $1250, something like that. That would look in a rental price range. Again, if you check that box, you're looking in a very different price range on property for sale. So just be mindful of that. It works the same way in your standard search in Matrix. The next field down is status and off to the far right there's a little icon for a multiple letting you know that those are multiple choice list. So if you click on that you'll get a little pop up. And in that pop up you're going to see your different uh, statuses that are options on a Windows machine, you can click and hold down the control key while you click. To select multiple options. It's a command key on a Mac. So if you wanted to select more than one status, you certainly could easily do that. Once you've highlighted everything that you'd like, you simply click the add button to move it to the rightmost column. If it's in the right hand column, then it's going to be searched by. Anything in the left column is what you could search by, but what's on the right hand column is what you have selected to search. And then you would just simply click OK. And then it places your statuses in the box for you. Coming down just a bit further, street number, street name are options as well. If you had a specific street address, you could simply use these fields. Please be mindful of the fact that you should leave off drive court, street, lane, avenue, et cetera, when you're filling in the street name field. If the street is on Maple Drive, just simply put Maple in this box next to street name. A little bit further down, there is a street type, again, with the multiple choice icon letting you know that you've got several options. This is where drive court, street, lane, avenue, et cetera, would go. And if we click on that pop-up, you'll see that you actually have quite a lot more than you probably anticipated. There's a pretty long list there. And my advice would be to be really mindful of selecting anything in this field because if the system doesn't match exactly, it won't find the property. I typically have better results if I leave the street type empty when I search by address. Coming down a bit further, we can search by subdivision. So if you know the subdivision name, you can do that. That's what I'm going to use today. So I'll just fill it in real quickly. You could also use zip code or zip codes separated by commas and city. Again, we have one of those multiple choice pop ups. So once you click on city, you'll see that you have all the cities that you can possibly think of, and then some perhaps, again, to select from there. And you would do it just with the same process that we used in selecting status. Again, once you select one, you click add, and that moves it to the right so that you can then search by that. Again, I'm not going to search by city. I'm just going to use the subdivision name, so I'll cancel. In real life, you would click on OK. And then last few fields, the building square feet. Again, you could put in a precise number if you wanted. It's highly recommended that you put in a range instead of a flat number, unless you want to limit it to exactly only that number, which in some cases you might want to do. 
And then on bedrooms and bathrooms, you'll want to use your plus and your minus here as well. If you limit it to exactly three bedrooms, you would simply type the three. If you put the plus, you're telling it three or more bedrooms. If you put the minus, you're letting it know to look for three or fewer. And if you put the dash between two numbers, you're searching for anything within that range, in my case, between three and five. And then you just simply click on search. And so here are the seven properties that have between three and five bedrooms that are in a subdivision named something called Spring Oaks. Again, pretty quick is the idea. It's a very minimal set of criteria to fill in, but you do have um, instant access to the results. Thank you for joining me on this tutorial. I hope you've learned something valuable. If you need any other assistance, please feel free to reach out to me directly by sending me an email or giving me a call. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your day.